the story of my life. This is all I do every day. My Bible and two commentaries on Isaiah. So it's Isaiah all the time. Well, sometimes I go on YouTube and watch other people's work. You know, like this this couple while we were, um, they used to have a van that where they travel all of Europe in. Now they gave that up and came home and bought a boat and now living on the boat and eventually will travel around the world in their boat, their sailing ship, sailing boat. Okay, Isaiah 40, chapter 41, another struggle session. So we, I thought after finishing the first 39 ch chapters, it'd be easier because after all, 40 to 66 would be about the Messiah, but no, it's, it's just as tough. You know, if you just read it without a commentary, you will have no clue what it's saying. Okay, so 40, 41. So 40 actually... We left off with, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this, they that wait upon the Lord. So the Lord will be your strength, will, will be your guide. So it ends, 40 ends with faint not. And 41 says, fear not. Okay, many times throughout 41, chapter 41, it says, fear not. Why? Okay, because understand as you know, a recap of what is Isaiah 40 to 66. Well, who, were, who was he speaking through? To the exiles, the exiles in Babylon. Albeit understand also Isaiah never went through the, the uh, exile. He the, the exile in Babylon would be 150 years after the death of Isaiah. So, so many people said, oh, he didn't write it, somebody else wrote it. But Jesus and the New Testament disciples always quote, Isaiah wrote this, they quote from both, both the whole of Isaiah and, and refers it to Isaiah, even though second part, even if it's, we thought that it's not written by Isaiah, by somebody else, Still, they refer, Isaiah said this in, you know, chapter 40, chap, you know, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. They come from there and say it's Isaiah. So, so it, it is, according to Moses, but yeah, according to many English scholars, uh, even New Testament, even scholars in the United States says in the last 200 years, years was the German school that really corrupted everything, that tore the Bible apart, that Moses did not write the Torah, that the New, the uh, New Testament was written years later. It was just a co compilation of little stories put together, put in the mouth of our Lord Jesus and reset it to his time. And Isaiah, well, if you look at it, uh, he didn't go to the, the, you know, the exile must be written by somebody else. Uh, for uh, the later part of Isaiah 40 to 66, is as beautiful, important a book. If somebody wrote it, surely he would have put his name on it and it would have Isaiah and then somebody else. But if you look at the, the, the most telling part is the Dead Sea Scrolls. Isaiah is one part, chapters 1 to 66. One, there's no gap between chapters 39 and 40, well, for one thing, <laughs> there are no chapters or verses. It's just a complete narrative. Okay, that's besides the point. So here are the exiles. You know, first, in four, chapter 40, we read, Comfort ye, comfort ye, your sins are forgiven. So they, because of their sin, sin, they went into exile. But chapter 40 clearly says, you know, I've paid the price for your sin. So now... You're not suffering for your sin. You're suffering because you're still in exile. You're still worshiping God in a foreign land. And, you know, there's no temple, things like that. I hear you. I hear you. I, 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 you know, I have not forgotten. Faint not. You know, if you faint not, if you continue in my way, fear not. I am, I am there. So anytime you're in any spot, and even as we are in the United States with this presidential election up in the air and things like that, and, you know, the, the news is going this way, that way, is <laughs> distressing, confusing. And we is like, what are we supposed to do? It's like, don't, you know, when you are in a situation like that, think, look, look up. What, what are we seeing? The sky. 
the creation, the stars, the moon, cosmos, that God's hand is at work there. He holds the waters of the earth in his palm of his hand. He knows the dirt. He knows the stars. Every single one is like, look up. This is him. He's, you know, sometimes, like I said before, you feel like, Lord, <laughs> the evil forces are too strong for you, even for you. It's like, huh? Really? Understand that. He says, fear not, faint not. In time, he will rescue. In time, he will answer. Especially, we've seen it, you know, he was, he does not forget what the Amalekites did to the Israelites as they were going through the desert. They, they fought them and God said, put right this on Moses, I will blot the Amalekites from the memory of the world. And indeed he did. And the Edomites, the Edomites, the, the descendants of, of Esau, you know, who says when the, when the children of Israel was passing through, they asked the Edomites, can we go through your land? We will not bother you. We will pay for everything you know, that we eat or, or drink. But the Edomites said, no. So they had, the children of Israel had to take a detour. You know, they were, what, what was Edom then around Petra today? And what did God say in, in Isaiah? It mentions the destruction of the Edomites, of Edom. Today's Petra, if you look at it, Petra was not like that. Petra was lush, they had water, there, there was grazing ground for sheep and cattle, there was olive groves. Look at Petra today. So here in chapter 41, it says, <clears throat> uh, you know, keep silence, you know, all you islands. You know, keep silence, you people in the world, I think that I cannot do anything. So verse 2, who God raise up the righteous man from the east and call him to foot. God will raise up the savior from the east. And, he, you know, he was his, you know, we, we know who this is later, Cyrus. And he is so powerful, you know, that one day we'll do, you know, the exploits of Cyrus. Cyrus was so powerful. He was so swift and fast that even the Bible says, his feet doesn't touch the ground, verse 4, uh, no, verse 3, even by the way that he has not gone with his foot. You know, he, 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 this is a description of, he's, you know, he's so fast and swift that it's like he, his foot doesn't touch the ground. That's Cyrus, yeah. If you, we later learn the exploits of Cyrus, we'll know how powerful Cyrus from the east and it says twice, God never promises anything without reiterating it over and over again. So in the uh, verse 25, says, I have raised up one from the north and he will come. Hmm. From the east and from the north, are there two people? Now understand, if you understand the geography, you will understand what this says. You have Babylon, you know, today's Iraq with the Tigris River, the mouth of the Tigris and Euphrates coming out from that Gulf of Basra. And then over to the east, this little dominion called Persia, where Cyrus comes from. So little Persia, Cyrus of little Persia went up north to the big swaths of land of Media and Lydia and conquered it. So it became the Medo Persian Empire. So Cy Persia being in the east, and then he conquered the north. So it would not, you know, so God says someone, I will raise up someone from the east, and then he says someone from the north will come down. So it's the same person. It's, it's Cyrus the Mede, sometimes it's known as Cyrus the Mede. It's Medo Persia. For some reason, Mede comes before Persia. So that's what it says there. Okay. Now, going forward, so again, again, when when we are going through some some huge how we you know, our problems always is seem so huge because we are human. He says, look up, look at the stars, look at the the cre look at creation. Then you see this is the same God then and now, and then what will happen? This is. Very interesting verse, verse 14. Okay, fear not. You know, he twice he's he verse 10 he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, 
I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Behold, all they that would incense against thee will be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. That is our inheritance, this God. And again, verse 14, fear not, he repeats. The worm of Jacob, you are a worm, we're, we're nothing. Don't we, don't we feel it, especially when we are oppressed? That, you know, they, they were feeling it, they were oppressed in in exile in in Babylon, they, they were not. There are many decrees that disallow them to worship their God. You know, Daniel, while living through the the exile, had to had to you know he he fought every plan of theirs. He said, do not worship to, in uh, do not pray to your God facing Jerusalem. Did Daniel listen? No, he opened those windows and prayed to Jerusalem. And for that reason, you know his friends is to go into the into the furnace, he had to go into the tent of hungry lions. So now they're not suffering because of their sin. Their sin was forgiven. They're suffering because of their righteousness, because of their desire to worship their God. So God said, fear not, fear not. I will send someone from the east. And again, said, someone from the north will come. So this east and north person is the same person, Cyrus. And verse 14, fear not, the worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, yeah, I know, I know, you're nothing but worms. You're, you're worms that you know, have no teeth and are so, so useless. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a sharp, new sharp threshing instrument with, the, with teeth. Wow. Instead of, I will change you from being a worm. Now you'll be an instrument with sharp teeth. Teeth, <laughs> thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. Verse 20, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this. The world will see when God acts and redeems his people. Even though they're like worms with no teeth, they will turn them into sharp, new, sharp, cutting instruments with sharp teeth. And this is the hand of the Lord. This is what he will do. So stay stay strong, stay in the faith, keep, keep the faith, whatever you may be going through. Remember, remember these things. These things, see, we never read of this <laughs> with the, oh, the Messiah, you know, strands of Handel's Messiah ring, rings in our minds and we think that's all Isaiah is more, uh, all about, but it's not so much more.